In this video, I'll go through a couple of examples where I use Gauss-Jordan elimination to find matrix inverses. Uh, first for a 2x2 two two matrix and then for a 3x3 three three matrix. So let's start with the 2x2 two two matrix. So we could easily find the inverse of this by just using the, the formula method, um, but it's instructive to go through a 2x2 two two example because it's easier to use Gauss-Jordan to find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix than it is to use adjoints and all that kind of thing. So that's why I find it instructive to go through an example of Gauss-Jordan elimination with 2x2 two two first and then move to 3x3. Three three. So let's find the inverse of this matrix, minus 1, 2, 4, 2. And the way that we use Gauss-Jordan elimination is to write down the elements of the matrix on the left and then draw a line and then write the elements of an identity matrix on the right and then we'll perform elementary row operations to change the matrix the four elements on the left to an identity matrix so 1 0 0 1 and then see what happens to the elements on the right of the line and we'll end up with the inverse matrix on the right so let's go through that. Super easy to make mistakes here, so I'll go through this as slowly as I can and hopefully I won't make any mistakes. So first we need to get a, a 1 in the top left element of the matrix. So one way to do that is to divide that top row by minus 1. So we'll have 1, minus 2, and then minus 1 and then 0 and we haven't done anything to the second row so far so I'll just write that down again and then we need to get a 0 for the bottom left element so we could do that by subtracting 4 times the first row from the second row so I'll just write down the first row again because we're not going to do anything with that one in this step and then the next row so 4 minus 4 will be 0 and then 2 minus 4 times minus 2 so 2 plus 8 will be 10 and then we've got 0 minus 4 times minus 1 so we'll have plus 4 and then we'll have 1 minus 0 okay next we'll just leave the top row again and then next we want to get a 1 in the bottom right corner so if we just divide that second row by 10 that will do it so we're getting fractions now so things are getting a little bit more complicated however we're nearly there because now we've got the second row where we want it And for the first row, all we need to do is get a 0 in that top right element. So if I add 2 times the second row to the first row, then I'll get a 0 there. Okay, and then this is the bit where you have to be careful. So I've got the top row, which has a minus 1, and I'm adding 2 times 2 fifths. So I've got minus 1 plus 4 fifths, so I'm going to have minus one-fifth and then I've got zero plus two times one-tenth so I'll have one-fifth okay and there's lots of places to trip up here and make a mistake so it's always worthwhile checking that your matrix inverse does indeed do the job. So one way to do that is to take your matrix inverse, multiply it by the original matrix and check that you get the identity matrix. So we're going to have minus fifth times minus one, so plus a fifth, plus one fifth times four, so one fifth plus four fifths, so one. And then we've got minus fifth times two, plus two times a fifth, so we get zero, 
and then we've got two fifths times minus one and one tenth times four so that's zero and then finally we've got two fifths times two so four fifths and one tenth times ten so another fifth so we've got one okay so let's apply the same method to the three by three matrix so more places to trip up so first we need to get a one here and there's different ways of doing that but I notice there's a one here so I'm just gonna switch these two rows just to start with as a quick way of, of getting a one where I want it so now the second row will be what was the first row Okay, next I want to get zeros here and here. So to get a zero here, what I could do is I could take this row and subtract two times the top row. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll just write down the top row again because I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. And then I've taken the second row and subtracting two times the top row. So I'll have a zero here, and then I've got two minus eight. So I'll have minus six. And then I've got four minus two times minus four. So four plus eight, so twelve. And then I've got 1 minus 0, so just 1 again, and then 0 minus 2, so minus 2, and 0 minus 0. Okay, and then next I need to get a 0 here, so I'm going to subtract 4 of the first row. So I'll get a 0 here, and then I've got 4 minus 4 times 4, so 4 minus 16, so I'm going to have minus 12. And then I've got 1 minus 4 times minus 4, so 1 plus 16, so 17. And then I'll have 0 minus 0, and then 0 minus 4 times 1, so minus 4, and then 1 minus 0, so 1. Okay, next I need to get a 1 here. So I'm going to divide this entire row through by minus 6. And I'm going to leave the other two rows alone. So let's see. So 0, 1, minus 2. And then I'm going to get some fractions now. So minus 1 sixth. And then minus 2 over minus 6, so 1 third. And then 0. And then I'm just leaving the bottom row as it is for this step. OK, next I need to get zeros here and here. So to get a zero here I could subtract four times the second row. To get a zero here I'm going to add 12 times the second row. So I'll do that in, in two steps just so I don't go too crazy. So let's see. So I am leaving the second row alone so I'll just write that down again. Oops. I don't think I'm going to have a zero there. Let me erase that. I got a little carried away. Okay, so uh, first row minus four times the second row. 
so that will give me a zero here and then first row is minus four minus four times minus two so minus four plus eight so plus four and then I've got zero and I'm subtracting four times minus one sixth so I'll end up with two thirds here and then I've got one minus four times one third so I'm gonna have minus one third here and then I've got zeros so that'll just be zero again and then I'll just um, write down this third row again because I I don't want to try and do too many things in one step because that's where you make mistakes. Okay, so now I'm not doing anything with the first and second rows. So I'll just write them down again. And a zero and second row is zero, one, minus two. Uh, minus one sixth, one third, and zero. Okay, and then this third row. So I'm adding 12 of the second row. No, adding 12. Yeah, no, that's right, adding 12 of the second row. So I start with a zero, and then I'm going to get another zero, and then I've got 17 plus 12 times minus 2, so 17 minus 24, so that'll be minus 7. And then I've got 0 plus 12 times minus 6, so that will give me minus 2. And then I've got uh, minus 4, and I'm adding 12 over 3, so actually that'll be 0, won't it? That's interesting. And then I've got uh, 1 and 0, so I'll just stay with 1 there. Okay, next, I've, I want a 1 here. So I'm going to divide through that third row by minus 7. Okay. So the top two rows are the same as they were in the previous step. And then this one, I'll get a, a 1 here, and I'm dividing by minus 7, so I'll have 2 over 7 here, and 0 here, and then minus 1 over 7 here. Okay. What next? Okay, next uh, I want to get a 1, no, sorry, a 0 here. So if I subtract 4 of the third row, that would do it. So now I'll have, uh, again, let me just write down what I'm not going to change to minimize the possibility of making a mistake. So we're not changing the third row, and actually I'm not going to change the second row just yet. I'll do that in the next step. Okay, so I am taking the first row and subtracting four times the third row from the previous step. So I'll have one zero zero. And then okay, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I've got two thirds and I'm subtracting four times two sevenths. So two thirds minus eight sevenths. Oh, yuck. Uh, I think I need to do a little bit of side work somewhere. Uh, I think I can get away with doing it. Am I going to have enough space? Yeah, I've only got one more step after this. So let's... What have I got again? Two thirds minus uh, four times two sevenths. So two thirds minus eight sevenths. 
So if, uh, I need to make a common denominator of 21sts. So I'll have 14 over 21 minus and um, three, uh, 24 over 21. Okay, so 14 minus 24 comes to minus 10. So this is minus 10 over 21. And then uh, what have I got? I've got minus a third. Oh, well, thankfully I'm subtracting zero. So that will just stay at minus one third. And then I've got zero minus four times minus one seventh. So four sevenths. Okay, nearly there, last step. So I'm good with the first row. And I'm good with the third row. And all I have to do is get a zero here. So if I add two times the third row, that'll do it. Okay, so zero, one, zero. I've got my identity matrix on the left, and I am taking the second row and adding two times the third row. So I've got oh, minus one sixth plus four sevenths. Ugh, that's a horrible one as well. That's going to be 40 tooths. So let me do a bit of side work. Uh, let's see, what did I say? I've got minus one sixth. And I am adding four sevenths. So common factor of a uh, common multiple rather of uh, 42. So I'll have minus seven over 42 plus uh, 24 over 42. So what is that? 24 minus 7, so 17 over 42. And then uh, I've got oh, one third with a zero, so I don't need to change that. That's good. And then I've got zero uh, plus two times minus one seventh, so minus two sevenths. Okay, so there is my inverse matrix with any luck. And all I need to do now is check that it works. So, don't have a whole lot of space here. So, I'm not going to attempt to write in that little space this matrix here. But this is my matrix down at the bottom minus 10 over 21, minus 1 third, 4 sevenths, 17 over 42, 1 third, minus 2 sevenths, 2 sevenths, 0, minus 1 seventh. So take that matrix and put it next to the original matrix and then multiply. And we need to get an identity matrix. So uh, let's do the first row times the elements in the first column. So I'm going to have minus 20 over 21 minus 1 third plus 16 over 7. Uh, you would have to do a little bit of fraction arithmetic there to check, but believe me, it comes to 1. And if you go through all nine calculations, you do end up with the identity, identity matrix just as we would hope. So that's a couple of examples of using Gauss-Jordan elimination to find matrix inverses.